Today on our 2016 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD, we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Kirk Double Lock Flip and Store Underbed Gooseneck Hitch with installation kit, part number C607-604. Here's what it looks like once it's installed in the truck. And you can see from underneath here, you're able to see its key feature, which is the double locking pins on the locking mechanism. So that's going to help to provide added security for when the ball's in place. When I pull the locking mechanism out, you can see the two pins that are used to help secure the ball into the hitch. And there you can see the spring-loaded action in order to reinsert the locking pins. And here's what it looks like from inside the bed of the truck. As you can see, we've got our 2 and 5 16 ball. And then around it, we've got this nice trim ring that's chrome and stainless steel. So that's going to help it maintain a very nice clean look in the bed of your truck. We've got these spring-loaded safety chain connection points. So you can pull them up when you're ready to use them. And when you don't have a trailer hooked up, they tuck down nicely into the bed corrugation so that you can still maintain use of your bed. And that's another nice feature of this gooseneck hitch is that you can flip the ball over and store it upside down so that way you'll be able to have full use of your bed. On the bottom side of the ball it's got that loop for when you're ready to pull it back out and use it. And you'll notice that on one side of our ball here, through the two locking pin holes, see we've got these grooves. And those are there because there's a pin that's down inside the hole for our ball that is going to go and rest in those to make sure that it sits at the proper depth and can't rotate when it's in there along with those locking pins to help make sure it stays secure. When you have it stored away, it also comes with this rubber cover that'll pop right down inside there. That'll help keep dirt and debris from getting down inside your gooseneck hitch. So that way it helps maintain the easy operation so that there's not that debris buildup. And you can see what's really nice about this is that when the ball's flipped over, you're still gonna have full access to your entire truck bed. It's not gonna eliminate any of it. This gooseneck hitch features a 7,500 pound load limit and a 30,000 pound gross trailer weight capacity. To begin our installation, we're gonna go ahead and remove the spare tire. Now with our spare tire out of the way, we'll need to remove this heat shield and we're gonna need to remove two 13 millimeter bolts in order to do that. Now we'll need to remove this heat shield. You can also cut a section of it out, but I'm just gonna remove it. It's gonna have four bolts that hold it in, and you'll need a 13 millimeter wrench or socket in order to do that. One on top of this cross member, and then one on top of this cross member, further forward, and then two on top of the frame rail up here. Now we'll remove this inner fender liner because it comes equipped with it and there are gonna be multiple screws that are gonna use a T15 Torx bit in order to remove them, and they're gonna be all throughout. Once you've got this fender liner removed, we'll go to the other side and do the same thing. Now we can remove our two bolts that hold that heat shield in place on top of the frame rail. Now we'll take our heat shield and remove it. Before putting our cross rails across the top of the frame rails, you'll want to take one of the half inch bolts that comes with the kit and thread it in to all the holes in the rails to make sure that the powder coating or any debris doesn't keep you from being able to easily thread them in by hand.
And you wanna be sure to do that on all holes on both cross rails. Now we'll install our front cross rail and you wanna be sure that you install it with the holes closer to the bottom when they'll be in there. And also, the difference between the front and rear rail is this front rail has this little shallow notch taken out and that's going to go towards the driver's side so that it'll give that little bit of extra clearance over the fuel tank. So we can put our rail on its side and slide it across until it's resting between both frame rails. And then we'll move it forward. So now we'll slide our rear cross rail into place. Now we'll take our cross rails and we'll need to flip them upright. In order to do that, I'm going to take a one inch wrench, but you can also use a crescent wrench or a pair of channel lock pliers. I'm going to grip it and turn it so that it flips upright. And again, you want to make sure that those holes are down towards the bottom. So on this front cross rail, you want that notch to be to where it goes right around the fuel tank there. And then you can move that forward a little bit. We'll slide it back all the way against our hat channel. Now we'll take our side plates and get them up into position. In order to do that, you want to make sure that you space them out far enough. You'll be able to slide it up in between there. You also want to make sure that the holes are going to line up with the holes in the frame. So now we'll take half inch bolt with flat washer and split lock washer. We'll get it started into the threaded hole on the cross rail. We'll do that same thing for the other cross rail here. So once we've got this one started, we'll go to the other side and do that same thing. Now with the side plates, we'll take one of our fish wires and fish the coiled end. We'll send it through the hole in the frame and then come out one of the larger holes on the inside of the frame rail. We'll take a square hold spacer block and a 5 8 inch carriage bolt thread it into our coiled end. Then we'll pull them back into the frame through that hole. And out through the hole in the side of the frame. And then we'll move to the other hole on the side bracket and do the same thing. Then with the bolt pulled all the way out. You can remove the fish wire and install a 5 8 flange nut. We'll just run it down finger tight and do that same thing on our other bolt. And then we'll move to the other side and do that same thing. Now I'm going to take a 3 quarter inch socket and just snug up the bolts the thread into our front and rear cross rails. I'll go to the other side and do the same thing. Kurt gives us this template to help make it easier to identify where we have to drill the hole in the bed in order for the gooseneck ball to come up through. So here's the front. We'll have that arrow going towards the front and we we'll want to make sure that the little flanges come down because line up with the holes in the rails. So then we can install a half inch bolt in each one, one in the front rail, and then one in the rear rail back here. Now I want to make sure that the template stays square here with the bottom of our cross rails, and then we'll just snug our bolts down. Now we'll take a quarter inch drill bit and drill through this hole as our guide. Now that we've got that pilot hole drilled out, 
we can take our template back out. Now, I'll use a hole saw to drill out this hole to the size indicated in the instructions. Now the exposed edge that we have here around the hole that we cut, I'm going to take a little bit of spray paint and coat that so that it isn't exposed and likely to rust. We'll need to lower our exhaust before we put our center section up into place. There's a few exhaust hangers. There's one back here. In order to remove it, you can take a little bit of spray lubricant. And you can use a pry bar in order to slide that off of there. Then there are two more just in front of our rear axle. You'll want to make sure to put a support strap up so that when you loosen all the hangers on your exhaust, it doesn't go too far and possibly damage the exhaust system. So we'll use that same process to remove the ones here in front of the rear axle. Now it's a good idea to get an extra set of hands to help put the hitch up into place. And with the hitch up in place, you want to be sure to get your half inch bolts with flat washer and lock washer started into the threaded holes on each cross rail. Using a three quarter inch socket, we can begin tightening up all of our hardware that secures our center section to our cross rails. We'll go back and torque down our bolts to the specification listed in the instructions. Now we'll torque down both sets of bolts for our side plates and torque them down to their specifications in the instructions. The nuts on these 5 8 bolts are going to be a 15 16 socket. Now that we've got everything torqued down, take a drill bit to drill a pilot hole through our inner safety chain loops here and we're going to get, try to get them in the lowest part of the corrugation of the bed. Now that I've got all my pilot holes drilled for my safety chain connections, I'll come up top here and drill them out the rest of the way, stepping up drill bit sizes until I've reached the final size. Once you've got the holes drilled out to the appropriate size, we can take our safety chain U-bolts and insert them. And you want to make sure that they'll move up and down easily. Now on each stud for the U-bolts, we'll put one of these flat washers, then one of our springs, followed by another flat washer. Then we'll take half inch nylon lock nut and get it started. Then we'll do that on the other three studs of our two safety chain U-bolts. Now we can tighten up our lock nuts on our U-bolts. And when we tighten them, we want the bottom of that bolt to be flush with the opening in that lock nut. Now we can insert our locking pin into the holes on the side and you want to make sure that the hole that goes through is on top. Now from the outside you can begin to put the handle in the plate through the hole. 
And then once through that inner hole, you want to be sure to slide the spring over. Then slide it into the top of our locking pin. And then you'll need to get the hole in the handle lined up with the hole in the locking pin. Once you've done that, you can take your bolt. Once pushed through, you can put on nylon lock nut. Then you'll need a 7 millimeter wrench or socket and an 8 millimeter wrench or socket. Now we'll reinstall our exhaust. Next, we'll reinstall the inner fender well. After reinstalling the inner fender liner on the driver's side, where we've got the handle, you'll see that it's covered. So we'll need to trim that in order to be able to use our handle. So now I've got room in order to use that handle. We'll reinstall our spare tire heat shield. And then we'll put our spare tire back up underneath the truck. That's going to complete our look at and installation of the Kurt Double Lock Flip and Store Underbed Gooseneck Hitch with Installation Kit, part number C607-604 on our 2016 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.